Hello students, welcome to EPG Park Chana. I am Professor Ripshita Bansal from BPS Women's University, Sonipat. Today, we are going to talk on the module Components and Strategies of Effective Reading from the paper Business Communication. By the end of this module, students will be able to understand first the components of effective reading, second, Students will be able to learn what the strategies for effect developing reading skills and third, students will be able to know the factors that affect the reading behavior. People generally lack in reading skills and are not very much interested in reading books. Also, they prefer more illustrative books over core text. To inculcate the reading habit, Special format programs need to be used which make reading interesting. The components of reading helps the reader to read the material in proper way. It also aids children to learn to read. There are various strategies which facilitates in effective reading and make reading an enjoyable task. So, what are the essential components of reading? Reading is an extremely complex cognitive process. Our intellect is in fact engaged in a number of tasks when we are reading. Despite of the belief that reading is one singular act. There are five attributes to the process of reading. Phonics, phonemic awareness, vocabulary, reading comprehension, and fluency. These five features work together to form the reading skill. In order to turn out to be a good reader, an individual must develop expertise in all these five areas. Components of reading. There are basic five components of reading. First, phonics. Second, phonological awareness, third fluency, fourth vocabulary, and fifth and most important comprehension. Let's take up the first element phonics. According to National Reading Panel, phonics instruction helps in early elementary students develop proficiency in decoding, spelling, and understanding words. Phonics is the relationship or a connection between sounds, letter symbols or word families, short vowels, long vowels and letter combinations and the sounds they represent. Without phonics, words are just a group of scribbles and lines on a page. There are many ways that phonological skins can be improved. Synthetic phonics. It makes words from the ground up. In this approach, readers are trained to first attach letters to their matching phenomes and then to combine those together to form a word. They discover the resonance of the letters in their minor units and then learn to place them together or blend them. Thus, it is named as synthetic phonics. For example, Beginners in reading first become skilled at the sounds a, uh, n, t before putting the letters together to form the word ant. Next, analytic phonics. Analytic phonics, on the other hand, approaches words from the top down. A word is recognized as an entire unit and then its letter sound associations are brought out. Analytic phonics talks about recognizing the whole words by vision or display and later split it down into the smaller units of sound. Using analytic phonics in reader's case, they are trained to identify and speak and after mastering the word and by sight. Readers learn to break the word into smaller parts like a and t. Thus, here the sounds of letter are taught after reading has become, 
even followed by correct spelling of words. Next is analogy phonics. It uses the known parts of the words to determine new words. Thus, phonics using the spelling mode emphasizes on linking the sound with letters in writing. All of the above mentioned techniques can be imparted and used independently or in combination to help the beginners to learn to recognize and familiarize themselves with new words. For example, during the learning process, when the readers learn the word play, they also come to know that A says sound of a long A and the similar spelling pattern is found in all these words. Day, say, may, lay, j, stay, spray, tray, etc. The sound spelling is highlighted so that it stands out visually as a unit, showing that the particular sound of A is used in many more different words. Phonic knowledge is very important as accurate and fluent word recognition depends on it. The ability to read words accounts for a substantial proportion of overall reading success even in experienced readers. They do not face any difficulty to identify new words. Readers prefer using the decoding approach. Whenever they come across an unknown a difficult word, they decode the word and then attach meaning to it. Most of the time, the context of the message helps a reader get the meaning of a word once a word has been decoded. Phonological awareness is the general appreciation of how language can be divided into its components. For example, we speak in sentences. Sentences can be broken down into words, words into syllables, and then onset time, rhyme. When the word is broken down into its smallest part, individual sounds or phenoms, the term phonemic awareness is used. Phonemic awareness is a sub-skill of the broad category of phonological awareness. It consists of the following. Words in sentences, syllables, onset rhyme, rhyme alteration, phonic awareness consists of isolation, blending, addition, deletion, substitution, and segmenting. Phonemic awareness. It consists of first phoneme isolation. It involves the reader linking the individual sounds in a word in order to determine its meaning. It also involves identifying the position of the sound, that is, where that sound appears in the word. Second, phoneme segmentation. It is about breaking the words into their consequent phonemes, which may involve one or more individual sounds to figure out the new word. Third, phoneme identification. Readers' general knowledge of phonemes play an important role to identify the sound patterns in words. This is usually developed through speaking. Finally, phoneme blending requires the reader to connect a series of phonemes together to create a word. Let's take up fluency now. Fluency is the ability to read accurately, quickly and articulate it with expressions. According to National Reading Panel, guided repeated oral reading significantly improves word recognition, reading fluency and comprehension in students of all ages. A Reader's Talent Fluency is a reader's talent to read with swiftness, accurateness and expression. Thus for fluency, it is required by a reader to merge and use several reading skills at the same time. While fluency is most often considered through oral readings, good readers also exhibit this skill when they are reading silently, as they hear the sound of the characters and even speak with expression. 
creating an overall picture a reader must be able to move swiftly in a sufficient amount from beginning to end of a text to build up the meaning if he stopped in between while reading each individual word or if lost amid some thoughts he will not be able to create an overall picture in his mind of what the text is saying even if the reader is able to move rapidly through a text if they are unable to master the expression associated with the words the meaning of it will be lost third fluency for new readers the new readers must relate their decoding skills to fluency and habitual reading of it to bring the perfect art of decoding readers who are reading with enough fluency are much more likely to figure out what they are reading thus the notion of self governing reading level is vital it is that level at which the child is familiar with more than 95% of the words and can read without struggling over decoding poor readers often read too quickly as they have some specific problem with fluent and usual text reading talking about vocabulary students need to hear read understand and use new vocabulary words in various contexts to build their comprehension levels repetition aided by quizzes glossaries and crossword puzzle is paramount in building vocabulary in order to read words we must first be familiar with them envision how difficult and futile it would be to read any content if all the words are unfamiliar as people become stronger more advanced readers they not only learn to attach their oral vocabularies to their reading vocabularies they also improve on both the vocabulary skills by relating and remembering them vocabulary development is a continuous process and this learning journey continues all through one's reading life there are two primary ways of teaching and learning new vocabulary words first is unambiguous teaching this include explaining someone that how a word is pronounced and what its meaning is this task must be performed by all it might be a teacher a dictionary a vocabulary guide or any other source contributing to definitions and pronunciations second context clue context clues are the suggestions contained in a text that help a reader to bring out the implication of a strange word they include other words in a sentence or paragraph diagrams graphs and charts context clues are basically anything in the text that clarifies the understanding of a new word let's talk about comprehension now comprehension is the fifth element of reading young readers develop text comprehension through a variety of techniques including answering questions and summarization comprehension is the main reason behind reading a text reading comprehension helps in understanding about the context or the text it is more than just understanding words in isolation it is using the word knowledge and trying to connect them into meaningful context the most complex aspect of reading as it requires the reader to understand and describe the contents of the text asking and answering questions and summarizing the text what has been read is possible when a reader is actively engaged with the content similar to vocabulary reading comprehension skills expand and advance over time through teaching learning and practice comprehension depends firstly on a large scale working vocabulary 
and considerable background knowledge of words. Valuable lessons will help the reader to vigorously relate his or her own awareness of knowledge to the ideas written in the text and then retain the information or the ideas that they understood from the text. So, what are the strategies for developing reading skills? Reading is a habit for a few, hobby for some and only a professional compulsion for others. In whatever way we may read, it is important to develop reading skills. Let's now understand some tips to improve reading. First, understand the importance of reading. Second, begin to read anything that pleases you. Third, spend some time reading every day and fix a particular time for reading. Fourth, gradually rise the time period of for reading. Fifth, read variety of materials to maintain interest. Reading in the native language is not that much difficult as it is in the different languages that people learn. People think that reading means to start with the initial part, going word by word and discontinuing or giving a break to look up the dictionary for every unknown terminology until the end of the topic. While doing this, people are relying entirely on their linguistic awareness, a bottom-up strategy where the word meanings are understood first and then the mind search the core idea of the content. The most important strategy for better reading is that instead of using bottom-up approach, individuals may use top-down approach as they do there in their native language. That is, to firstly get an overall idea of the content and then start reading by predicting and scanning. The reading strategies may help all of us to adjust our reading behavior to deal with multiple situations, reading purposes and to contribute in future perspectives. This may help the readers to develop a set of reading strategies and match suitable strategies to each reading situation. Let's now understand the strategies that can help students read more quickly and effectively. These strategies include reading at a glance, predicting, skimming and scanning, presumption and rephrasing. Reading at a glance for getting the logic behind the content which is selected for reading it, it is important to have a glance over the non-verbal items or main topics like titles and headings, subtitles, looking over the pictures or diagrams, going through graphs, tables, pie charts, flowcharts and checking the sources. Predicting this strategy helps by improving vocabulary by regular and varied reading. Whenever finding a new word, try and attempt to look at the dictionary. Pay attention to synonyms, antonyms and substitutions. Thus, by this way, if the vocabulary is already good, so by using this past knowledge, a reader can make future predictions. The previous information about text type, structure of content and purpose aids here to understand the vocabulary, the content and to grasp meaning. Predicting is also helpful when the reader is familiar with the author and can predict his or her writing. Skimming and scanning To skim and scan needs a good reading speed. As through skimming, one can do a quick survey of the content, that is, a book, article, letter, etc. This facilitates in getting the main idea, identifying structure of the text, 
specifying protected details and even answering few questions. Presumption from context. Tracing the content, using cues to get an idea of the subject or extracting the meaning of unknown words by going through the sentence or by relating it with topic instead of stopping to look them up. Logical thinking. For presuming the context, logical thinking of various situations and problems will improve the ability to logically link and see rationally to the ideas presented. This will enhance the ability to grasp the theme and other connected ideas. Rephrasing Rephrasing is stopping at the end of a segment to make sure the understanding of paraphrasing the information and ideas in the text. Reading to learn Reading is an indispensable part of language as it not only enhances the linguistic knowledge expansion but also helps learning in various other ways. It relates to first reading to discover the language. Reading material is language contribution which includes words, speech, lingo, etc. It is important to provide students with multiple opportunities by giving them a variety of materials to read, that is to absorb vocabulary, grammar, sentence structure as they occur in contexts. Students thus gain a more complete picture of the ways in which the elements of the language work together to convey meaning. Second, reading for content information. Students' purpose for reading is often to obtain information about the content, a topic or an area of discussion of their interest, which can help them in the language learning classes also. Content reading provides students both valid reading material and a genuine purpose for reading. Third, reading for cultural knowledge and awareness. Reading everyday materials like newspapers, magazines and websites can give one and all an insight into the lifestyles of others and even the world views. In this way, by help of everyday reading, people increase their knowledge and awareness as they are exposed to different cultures. Do's and don'ts of reading strategies. So let's first take up the do's. What we should do while reading. Determine the purpose of reading. Read a variety of material to acquaint oneself with new vocabulary. Involving oneself in reading. Taking notes to make reading a more active process. Paying attention to non-verbal cues, improving vocabulary by using dictionary, reading through presumptions and logical thinking, concentrating while reading, and answering the questions after understanding the type of question asked. So now, what are the don'ts of reading strategy? What we should not do while reading? First, Going on reading without understanding the context. Second, restrict the reading to a single field and neglecting others. Third, detaching from reading activity. Fourth, just going through the lines, making reading a passive process. Fifth, ignoring non-verbal items. Sixth, getting fixed at a word or phrase for a long time. Seventh, not using logic while reading. Eighth, being influenced by distractions. And last, start answering blindly, not properly understanding the questions. Factors affecting reading behavior. The first factor is attitude. 
positive attitude helps in building an interest towards reading as it facilitates in understanding and grasping the content for future use. It also provides an opportunity to use the knowledge which has been acquired by reading to assist someone in the task. Reading with right attitude leads one to synergy and helps in keeping themselves away from niggurji or from the negative thoughts which surrounds people from time to time. Next is peer influence. Peer influence is the most impactful thing on readers. Right from the small age, they should be encouraged for group reading and to share reading materials among themselves. Interest in reading at a small age can inculcate a hobby in people. Also, they should be made aware of importance of reading books and encouraged to give the books to friends as well. Reading campaigns and camps should be propagated in the campus learning campuses frequently to promote reading culture. Also, benefits of share and read should be made known to them, which would help more in developing the interest in reading. Third, environment. More efforts can be put forward to create the right ambience to the reading culture by providing the best environment to read. The surroundings affect a lot on reading and also on the type of reading. It's important to have a right kind of environment, not only for children or students in their educational institutes, but also for the employees in organization so that they can enhance their knowledge by reading valuable materials. Next is cost of reading materials. Cost is the most constraining factor for buying and reading books. It does have a negative influence on the reading habit as most of the reading materials are quite expensive. This is to be expected that if lower prices of books and reading materials are provided, it can enhance reading practices. Electronic formatted materials are more popular due to its lower cost. However, some of the readers are ready to pay higher prices if the book is of great interest to them. Therefore, we believe that price factor can be one of the major constraints for students or even employees belonging to moderate to lower income group families. Last factor is reading stations. Reading stations are another medium to encourage reading habits among students or employees. It can be of great use if it is designed in a planned way. Most of the students show lack of interest to use this facility due to limited number of books, outdated reading materials, too academic, books but not so relevant, limited subjects or the subjects not of the interest, and broader coverage of comics, novels and magazines are not available. Those students acknowledge and support the concept of reading stations, but they are unhappy about the selections of books available. Also, the available reading material needs to be updated on a regular basis to attract more readers. Quality of books also plays a major role in motivating students or employees to make them read. So students, let's now summarize what we have learned in this module. Reading is very important part of life. There are five attributes to the process of reading. Phonics, phonemic awareness, vocabulary, reading comprehension, and fluency. Reading at a glance, forecasting, skimming are some of the strategies which sharpens reading skills, knowledge and experience. Some factors like 
attitude, cost and peer influence affect the reading behavior of individuals. At the beginner's level, when the learners use different reading strategies, they understand their use in different situations. This motivates them and increases their confidence level with respect to their ability to read the language and understand it. Thank you.